this is Patrick at Digital Vision and we're going to look at the timeline a little bit today uh, for our Phoenix and Yakoda trading. Um, we're going to start on the left hand side here. This is what we call the effects tree or the effect stack. Uh, I have some effects over here which I can access through the menu and I have icons here which will allow me to add layers, uh, place layers. I've got a reset and a, and, and a delete uh, button over here. I've got time code information over here. Switch between frames and time code. I have my uh, transport over here, play forward, play backwards. I can decide how I want to play my clips back. Do I want to do it um, between in and out marks? Do I want to set it per, per clip? Or do I just want to play, play forward? Um, in other words, no looping at all. This would uh, loop a clip if I was in clip mode. If that would loop it. That would just play without looping. And that would do a ping pong. And using this, I can actually go and set some handles. So if I am in clip mode, it will add 25 frames at the top and at the bottom. I can, uh, if I have multiple output modes, I can switch between them over here. And I can also switch between my proxies and my one-to-one -one media over here. This library button and the MEMS button will allow me to switch, if I'm in single monitor mode, between my canvas, my, uh, my picture, and uh, my memories, which uh, we will do uh, a little bit later. Down the right hand side here, we've got tools that have to do with monitoring. In other words, this would be tools for comparisons, overlays, uh, grids, uh, measurement tools like histograms and graphs, um, and also for turning lookup tables on and off. Down here, we have a row of icons. We have icons here to add and remove uh, tracks. So that'll add audio and uh, audio track and a video track. That'll delete uh, selected tracks. Track selection is indicated by the orange button on the track. Having track selected is important in some operations. So make sure that you check. Ripple, we've got remove, we've got um, overwrite, we've got a splice in, we've got add cut, um, remove cut, as well as mark in and out, remove in and out. Uh, we have version tools over here. We've got a trim tool and what we call a segment mode tool. And then this little button here will allow us to switch to a different menu. And this all has to do with our keyframes. So auto key, moving forward, moving backwards, navigating through keyframes. On the side here, we've got magnifying glass, which will allow us to zoom in and out. I can do this on the, the timeline using the mouse wheel or using the plus and the minus key. I have got my uh, normal direct selection icon, which is normally the, um, the mode that, that you would be in. These buttons down here, we can have a look at a bit later, but they will allow you to scrub the entire sequence or um, the what is visible on your timeline or just a single shot. And it'll also allow you to ignore or not accidentally grab any uh, keyframes that you've uh, created that will show up in this little bar down on the side here. Apart from that, we've got uh, some tabs. We've got a shots view, a keyframe editor. Our effects, if we had any color effects, would be in there. We've got our uh, point tracker, and then we have the scene detector, which is probably one of the places I, I never ever go because the scene detector is is really good and, and hardly need changes to, to its parameters. You can use F1 to F5 to change the layout of the timeline and uh, library section. If I want to make my timeline larger, so in this mode, I have a library at the top, I've got my timeline at the bottom. Control F4 will switch me to a double height mode. And I have basically got a double height mode for my timeline. If I press F4 again, I can now have a full height view. Now this is really handy if you're in a multi-monitor mode where you have the timeline on one side, you would have your memories on a second monitor and then you have your SDI output. The other option that you have is Control F5, which will split this view into, uh, into two. 
and what this would mean is if you do take a piece of media I'm just going to quickly put this on here you will see that your effects from the uh, effects tree will appear uh, at the bottom here as you get more proficient what I'm going to do is I'm just going to split this I'm going to leave that uh, in a single view as you get more proficient you might find that you use uh, the timeline view most of the time and you don't have to see the effects uh, this is if you're using a panel like the precision or the tangent um, elements you'll be able to just look at the panel and make the, the decisions that you need to there are some places that you will need it um, for example in your shape tool or in your key tool but um, very often um, you would um, for your color tools you would purely depend on uh, what you see on uh, on the panel so I hope I know it's been a bit of a whirlwind but I hope that that would give you a fairly good idea of what we do on the timeline how the timeline works or what all the buttons do and uh, I look forward to doing another video and I'll speak to you soon